start tearing this thing behind me down to uh, take it to our new farm and um, thought I'd give you a tour first. This used to be the garden. One really cool thing that I just saw, look at this. These are the Texas State Flower, the Blue Bonnets. Growing out here in the garden for some reason. There are a few of them too. I don't know why, but we did the deep litter method and check this out. Even, even from, uh, we did, haven't done any gardening for like two years in this space. Maybe more. Two years and there's very few weeds growing. Isn't that incredible? We had this surrounded on the edge with a double wall structure. That way the chickens could have a run around our garden. And then we had our garden in the middle of it. So that way the chickens would keep all the pests from coming into the garden and the double wall structure would keep the deer and other things from jumping into the garden to eat our stuff. We had chicken wire on one side, on the inside, that wasn't as predator um, susceptible. And then we had a two by four welded wire on the outside to keep the raccoons and other things out. It worked pretty well for the most part. Now I'll show you that. So you come in through the doorway and remember this used to be a a double walled run that would go out there and kind of surround the garden area. But this is a little ramp going up to the thrones where they would um, perch. Now you see the poop there. My hope was that uh, most of the poop or all the poop would fall through and it would keep predators out. You can see that didn't really work. I think that's half inch uh, hardware cloth. I think next time use three fourths or inch hardware cloth. These are the nesting boxes. I think I might transfer these up to our farm. This was our watering station here. Let me show you. So we had the little watering nipples and it went all the way through that pipe up here to 10 gallons for the water storage. So that way we had water storage no matter what. And at the bottom right here, I had a toilet float valve, I mean the toilet float valve is still in there, and then it would fill up with water. Because I had a water line coming from over here, oh it looks like it's cut. Huh. Anyway, I had a water line coming from over here all the way over, so that way we um, could have it automatically filled up with water. This system worked super good. This piece of metal right here used to be up on the roof. And it's shocking, we had a big windstorm and it blew it off. Luckily, we didn't have chickens in there because that would have been pretty tragic. But, uh, and it's strange because, like these holes, they're not ripped out. They're not ripped out, so the screws must have just been super loose. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to work on um, tearing this thing down. I'll show you the after, after I've torn it down. And we're going to take this back to us, to the farm. Maybe we'll make like a little temporary pig or cow enclosure or something we'll see so that house back there down right there the blue one we rent that out short term we've done that for several years and it's been pretty good for us and i was just you know out here taking this uh chicken coop apart old chicken coop apart and the guest that's there currently he came over um well he was out walking his dog and so i went over to chat with him and he's just super awesome dude super nice but it brought me, uh, it made me think a lot about this concept of freedom. You know, we talked a lot about freedom and um, just different types of freedom. And, you know, as I was thinking about taking apart this chicken coop, is it worth my time to take this thing apart? Um, you know, I guess it depends on how much you value your time. So let's say I get, I don't know, 10, let's see, one, two, three, four, five six seven eight maybe nine two befores and then this roof which is probably another say seven two befores okay so say i get um say like 16 two befores and each two before i don't know how much they're worth say they're worth five bucks um well let's do 15 because it's easier to multiply so 15 times five is 70 bucks right 15 times 5, no, 15 times 5 is 60 bucks. Um, okay, so there's 60 bucks worth of lumber. Now, we do still have to haul it up to where we're going, and so maybe there's a, a opportunity cost there and all that kind of stuff. So let's say 
I have $150 worth of material because I do have the roofing and all that kind of stuff. 150 bucks and I'm using old wood to build this new shed. I've got the old wood and it's not brand new wood so maybe it won't last as long. And say it takes me, I don't know, I've been out here for like an hour maybe, say it takes me two hours. Um, is it worth my time? Is that really finding freedom versus I can just go out and buy the wood, have it delivered to my house for free. I mean, I buy the wood and so then I spend the 150 bucks and then it's delivered to my house. So then I don't have all this takedown. I don't load it onto the trailer. I don't haul it all the way up to our farm. None of that. So is that finding freedom? Now to you, it might not. To someone else, it might not. To me, there are different elements of freedom. One is having the freedom to do what I want to do versus what someone else is telling me I have to do. And because I've built and designed this chicken coop when I lived here, and I've had lots of um, chickens there and kind of sentimental, I guess you could say, it makes me feel good to know that I'm reusing it versus just trashing the thing. Um, I could sell it, potentially. I made efforts to sell it, but, you know, people buying an old-use chicken coop, there's not a huge market for that. So, to me, where it gets me freedom is I have the time to be able to do it, even if it doesn't make fiscal sense. So, if it takes me two hours and, say, each hour of my time is worth 200 bucks, that's $400, but yet I'm only saving 150 bucks in material I've lost. 250 bucks in that equation. However, what I've gained is the memory of the chicken coop, building the chicken coop. Um, you know, like, I think that's priceless. So, the long and the short answer is what is freedom to you? And it's probably different than what freedom is to me. Freedom to me is being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it you know, and someone else is not forcing you to do something or telling you to do something and if you don't believe that your employer is forcing you to do something try and not do it see what happens you probably won't have a job there very much longer they're not forcing you meaning like you know with physical force but they are paying you to do something and if you don't do it they'll find someone else to do it you know Life is very, very short. Uh, several people passed away recently in the family and just friends and such. And life is so short, do you want to spend a lot of your life trying to please somebody else? Or do you want to work to please those that you really care about and love, like your family and yourself? So, you know, really think about it. You know, this, this good guy that's staying in the, we call it the cottage in the woods. This good guy that's staying in the cottage back here he, was, he really had a cool um, perspective on things, and he, it seems like he's going to start going in the, in the direction of looking for freedom, um, just looking for different uh, income streams and things to free him to, to do what he wants to do. And that's what I was telling him, you know, like, we farm right now. We haven't made much money at all at farming. You know, we've sold some hay, made some money there. Maybe we're going to sell some uh, eggs. Maybe make a couple bucks there, but nothing like, you know, no substantial amount of money. Um, however, we have the freedom. You know, we make the money in other ways, right? But um, the freedom to farm and the freedom to do whatever it is we want to do is worth, you know, millions of dollars. Because dollars sitting in the bank, you know, even if it's SVB and the bank goes away because it... It dies and then the, the feds bail it out and bail out all those consumers and then the president of the United States says hey still trust us you know I mean we could get into this political discussion right but long story and long answer look for freedom this is freedom to me because I like doing it it doesn't make fiscal sense right like I'm gonna have to go through all this work to pack this sucker onto a trailer and then haul it up to the barn and you know all that kind of stuff like we've already talked about however because I like doing it and I want to do it and I'm able to do it it's freedom look for that in your life do whatever it takes do whatever you can do it as well you can do it if I can do it you can do it
taking down the um, trampoline here. Wow, it's pretty warm here in Texas, but check that out. Loading up the trailer. We should be out of here before long. I want to highlight a few things I'm taking. See this little water trough? I think it might be 50 gallons or I don't really know how much, but what's awesome about this little water trough is my mom bought this thing. My mom and dad bought this when I was little, like when I was 12. Now I'm 40, so that's a lot of years, 28 years. And so it's lasted a really long time. It's an incredible product. And this living human right here is an incredible product as well. She's phenomenal. She's gonna drive this car right on up into the trailer. This uh, gate that we have here, I think is weighted to hold a car or heavy tractor or something. So let's hit the gate, it can hold a car. Look at that nice little parking spot. Good, can I get a thumbs up? Oh my goodness, all fingers. How can you not smile every day when you have cool stuff like that going on? This other tool is one that I'm excited to try out on the farm. This is called Billy Goat because it's supposed to chew through anything. My buddy um, got this from an auction or something and he gave it to me and he is so cool. So we're taking my childhood table as well. Look at how awesome that is. Uh, well, you can't really see it, but these chairs right here were taken. Fun fact, what popular television show from the uh, 80s and 90s uh, featured these same style of chairs? Post in the comments which TV show do you think it is. This is a fairly popular style of chair, so maybe there are more than one. But let me know what you think it was, because I'll tell you what it is maybe in the next video or in the comments. It's been kind of fun loading up all this stuff. I just hope I can get it all to fit, and then we'll uh, we'll be on our way. We do. Oh my! I don't think I've shown you yet, but we have the best, the best addition yet to the farm ever. Another kid. She's super cute. I love holding her. Fantastic. I mean, it's like that's one of the true joys of being a father, is um, having kids and then holding them. And I mean, it's hard for me not to go to sleep when I'm holding them.